RBL News 3 First Alert Weather. Okay, Monday morning, we've got areas of fog to talk about. We'll have all the details on this coming up in the next three minutes. Alrighty, thank you so much, Nicole. Straight ahead, a weekend shooting leaves two people injured. New details into that investigation this hour. Next, the new COVID-19 variant has been discovered right here in the Peach State. Why health leaders say this is a cause for concern. Plus, are you looking to fly out of town soon? Well, what you need to pack is an earlier COVID-19 test. It all starts today. We'll have those details as News 3 this morning starts right now. On your side, this is News 3 this morning. Well, good morning to you. Rise and shine. You're waking up to December 6, 2021. I'm Blake Eason. Great to be back with you on this Monday morning. My co-anchor Crystal Whitman has the morning off. Leading us off today, two people are recovering after a shooting in Columbus this weekend. The shooting happened on Clay Street and Harborson Drive yesterday evening. Now, News 3 saw multiple shell casings on the ground when EMS was there shortly after 6.30 last night. Columbus police had put out at least 19 evidence markers, and according to police, the two victims are expected to be okay. So stick with News 3 as we work to learn more about what led to this shooting and how it all started in the first place. You'll want to go ahead and download our news app, and don't forget to turn on those notifications. You don't want to miss out on important alerts about any breaking news. And turning now to the fight against COVID-19, that newly detected coronavirus variant Omicron has been detected right here in Georgia. That's according to the Georgia Public Health Agency, who confirms the fully vaccinated person who recently traveled home from South Africa. They reported stay they reportedly stayed here in Georgia for two days before traveling to New Jersey, where they're now in isolation. Now, no additional Omicron cases have been identified in Georgia at this time, but health officials are working to identify those who came in contact closely with that person. And this comes as cases of the Omicron variant are continuing to spread. At least 17 states have reported Omicron related infections. Many of the confirmed cases have been found in vaccinated people who reported having mild symptoms. Now, experts say it's still crucial to determine if Omicron is more transmissible than other variants. Take a listen. But we really got to be careful before we make any determinations that it is less severe or. It really doesn't cause any severe illness comparable to Delta. But thus far, the signals are a bit encouraging regarding the severity. Now, Omicron's arrival comes with a spike in new COVID-19 cases, up 19% in just two weeks. Now, the number of new infections now tops 108,000 a day. The CDC says 99% of those cases are caused by the Delta variant, with unvaccinated people remaining the most at risk. And new this morning, travelers heading to the U.S. need to add a negative COVID-19 test much quicker than before. So the new policy requires a negative test result within one calendar day of an international flight back into the U.S., regardless of your vaccination status or what country you're coming from. This used to be three days prior to traveling home, now just 24 hours. Meanwhile, the Surgeon General is standing firm on the restrictions previously announced on travel from countries in Southern Africa. Take a listen. These are meant to be temporary measures. Nobody wants them to be on for any longer than they need to be. And that's why we're continuously reevaluating them so that we can get them off as soon as it's appropriate. Now, the, they did not comment on whether or not this ban would be lifted. Of course, we'll continue to follow that for you. It's always great to have you here with us on News 3 this morning. Meteorologist Nicole Phillips joins us now with the wake-up forecast to get you rolling this morning. Nicole, feels so good to be back in Georgia. Feels much <laughs> different than New York City. Yes, it does. And, you know, our temperatures this weekend, we were in the 70s throughout. And today will be the same, but we've got some changes with the cold front coming through. This morning, we do have some areas of fog, and it is dense. So be careful. Here's a look out at Phoenix City. The amphitheater this morning. You can't really tell, but when you kind of go on out and, and about this morning, you'll be really able to kind of see all of that fog. 55 degrees in Columbus, 60 in Eufaula, and 57 in Auburn. And so here's the deal. We've got some showers out in the western portions of Alabama, northwestern portions, I should say. It's all ahead of this cold front that will be sliding through this afternoon into this evening, and that's going to give us a chance for some showers and, yes, even some rumbles of thunder. So 68 degrees by noon, still in the middle 70s today. Cooler on Tuesday, your seven day forecast coming up in 10 minutes. All righty, thank you, Nicole. Keeping an eye on COVID 19 as part of the Biden administration's new plan to combat 
the virus, the White House is offering free testing and reimbursement for at-home COVID-19 tests. Now, President Biden is requesting private health insurers to reimburse the cost of over-the-counter testing kits. The government will also buy another 25 million tests for clinics and health centers to offer those for folks who do not have insurance. And at new this morning, one drug maker says the testing of its new antibody treatment shows it is effective against the Omicron variant of the virus. They say it has studied its treatment in lab tests and on hamsters. Uh, now, this is obviously compared to the other drug that said it was treated, appeared to be less effective against the Omicron variant. And it's not just one virus we're fighting, it's two. From COVID 19 to the seasonal flu, doctors are urging you to not forget about both of the viruses uh, during this time of the year. Last year, there were 20,000 flu related deaths. That's down by 8,000 deaths compared to the 2018 2019 flu season when COVID 19 precautions had. Not yet begun. Now, many of those precautions, doctors say, saved lives. Take a listen. Last year, we saw that the cold and flu season really wasn't that bad because a lot of people were wearing masks. And so that is a benefit of wearing the mask is you prevent those common cold and flu type of things. And, you know, your cold symptoms are totally different than your flu symptoms. But the flu can be really serious, and so we can prevent that by wearing masks, wear your mask. If you can prevent that by social distancing, go ahead and social distance. Um, that, that just does not apply to COVID. Now, Dr. Abdullah says getting your flu shot is the best way to stay healthy this winter. And this week, the West Central Health District is making vaccinated uh, easier. They're essentially coming to you and coming to different neighborhoods all across Columbus. They'll be administering flu and COVID-19 vaccines at mobile vaccine clinics throughout Columbus every day this week. So if you're near your TV right now, go ahead and take a look at this. Here's a look at all of their scheduled stops. You'll want to go ahead and take a quick photo of this. Of course, you can find it on our website as well. That'll be um, right there coming up at our six o'clock hour. We'll hear from the West Central Health District about this vaccine opportunity if you're looking to get a COVID-19 vaccine or a flu vaccine. As always, we thank you so much for trusting WRBL News 3 this morning as your favorite tours right when you wake up. Coming up, you might want to check your refrigerators. A popular lunch meat has been recalled. We'll tell you all about it when we come back. First, here's meteorologist Cole Phillips for a look at that Monday weather. Good morning to you, Nicole. Good morning. So I'm tracking a cold front that's going to give us a chance for showers and even rumbles of thunder later on this afternoon. Your day planner coming up at 13 minutes past the hour. News 3 is on your side with Crystal Whitman, Blake Eason, and meteorologist Nicole Phillips has your first alert forecast. On your side, you're watching WRBL News 3 this morning. Well, welcome back to News 3 this morning. Saudi Arabia's decision to raise oil prices could send gas prices even higher. The kingdom hiked the cost on crude exports to the U.S. and Asia by about 80 cents a barrel. Now, Sunday's increase came less than a week after OPEC announced it would continue to increase output. Analysts say the move suggests Saudi Arabia expects global demand to keep climbing. 
And Alexander and Hormaga is recalling more than 240,000 pounds of ham and pepperoni products because of a possible Listeria contamination. So you'll definitely want to hear this. The affected meats were sold nationwide under a variety of brand names, including Welshire and Butcher Boy. The items are fully cooked and have EST M10125 stamped inside the USDA's inspection mark. Again, that's M10125. You'll find that on the USDA's inspection mark inside. The hams should be discarded or returned to the store for a recall. And it's not just adults who can have fun while driving a Tesla. The electric car maker is now selling four wheel ATVs for children. The Cyber Quad for kids goes for 1900 bucks. Shipping takes up to about four weeks, but it's currently out of stock at the moment. Tesla says it's meant for children ages eight and up. The battery has an estimated range of about 15 miles, and the vehicle can reach a top speed of 10 miles per, per hour. And that's your morning consumer news. Your time now 510 Eastern, 410 Central, and also time to check back in with meteorologist Nicole Phillips for a look at your weather right now. So this morning we've got some fog out there that's going to slow you down, but I'm also tracking a cold front for this afternoon and evening. I will have your day planner coming up after the break. Don't forget to download the weather app, turn on the notifications so you can stay connected. On your side, meteorologist Nicole Phillips has your first alert forecast. Well, good Monday morning, 13 minutes past the hour. We unfortunately have some fog out there, and it is dense, and we can see that here on the current visibility. So allow yourself some extra time as you are heading out to work and to school this morning. We'll see some big improvements by the mid-morning hours, and then we are tracking a cold front that will be coming through. So when we look out at Toomer's Corner, you can see some of that fog in the distance here. Just the visibility looks a little bit lower. It looks hazy out at Toomer's Corner, but again, there are some areas where it is extremely dense, so just be careful this morning. 49 degrees up in Pine Mountain, 50 in the Grange, 58 degrees in Fort Gaines, and 60 in Eufaula. So honestly, our temperatures not too bad to start off the morning. We do have some cloud cover that's moving on in, and it's all ahead of this cold front that will be moving in this afternoon and also into this evening. So let's go ahead and track that. The severe risk is going to stay primarily well to our west in the portions of Louisiana and also Mississippi, but there may be a few areas that experience some gusty winds as that front comes through initially. So right over 
along uh, from Tuskegee down towards Union Springs, even uh, over towards Auburn as well for this afternoon. So tracking this on our radar forecast, it's not out of the question that we may get a spotty shower or two right around the 9 to 10 a.m. time frame and even as we go towards midday. But the bulk of the front will come through right around 2 p.m., so 2 to 3 p.m., and then pushing on through as we head towards our evening commute. So it's going to be slow go once again and then pushing out of here by at least 8 p.m. So heavy rain and maybe even some gusty winds will be uh, the primary threat for today. But again, our severest is extremely low. That front will move down towards the south, but what happens is it will actually stall out as we go into Tuesday. So that's going to keep some clouds around and also some spotty showers as well. Here's a look at your day planner. We will warm up ahead of that front 68 degrees by noon, still in the middle 70s. Again, well below or well above average, I should say, for this time of the year. We should be in the low to middle 60s in here. We are the low to middle 70s today, 75 degrees out in Americas and 74 in Eufaula. So, looking at our seven day forecast, 59 degrees on Tuesday. Yes, so that front, it will come through, it will drop our temperatures, but stalling off towards the south, it eventually gets its act together by Wednesday, giving us another chance for some scattered storms and then spotty showers through the rest of the week and into this weekend. All righty, thank you so much, Nicole. After an incredible season all across the country, we now know college football's final four. Jack Patterson breaks it all down for us. Take a look. Good morning, everyone. With a look at your morning sports, I'm Jack Patterson. Here we are, the first Sunday in December. Four teams now know they will get an opportunity to host college football, to hoist college football's top prize. Here are the semifinal matchups for this year's college football playoff. In the first semifinal will be the newly crowned number one team in the country, the Alabama Crimson Tide, fresh off of winning the SEC title for the tenth time under Nick Saban. They will be in Dallas for the Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic, and they will face Cincinnati, the American Athletic Conference champions, the first ever group of five team to make it to the playoffs. This game will be at 3.30 Eastern on New Year's Day. And in the other semifinal, it will be the second-ranked Michigan Wolverines, champions of the Big Ten, taking on the former number one team in the country, the Georgia Bulldogs, in the Capital One Orange Bowl, also on New Year's Eve in Miami. Michigan hammered Iowa 42-3 to win the Big Ten, while Georgia was undefeated until falling to Alabama in the SEC Championship on Saturday. This game will be at 7.30 Eastern on New Year's Eve. The winners will play each other in the national championship game January 10th, in Indianapolis. Now here's the rest of the New Year's Bo New Year's Six Bowl lineup. In Atlanta, it will be Michigan State and the ACC champion Pitt Panthers in the Peach Bowl on December 30th. In the Fiesta Bowl is Notre Dame and Oklahoma State on New Year's Day. In the Rose Bowl, also on New Year's Day, Ohio State taking on Pac-12 champion Utah in Pasadena. And the Sugar Bowl in New Orleans is Ole Miss taking on Big 12 champion Baylor. Now let's check out some other notable bowls for teams in our area. Auburn won't have to travel far for their bowl. They'll take on Houston in the Birmingham Bowl at Protective Stadium. That's on December 28th at noon Eastern. And the Georgia State Panthers will take on Ball State in the Camellia Bowl in Montgomery. That's on Christmas Day, 2.30 Eastern at the Crafted Bowl. And a quick reminder that for the latest sports news and late breaking headlines, you can follow the News 3 Sports team over on Twitter. There you can find game highlights, score alerts, and much more. You can find us at WRBL Sports and follow us there whenever we're not on air. And be sure to stay tuned to News 3 Sports today. The Pacelli Lady Vikings in the Final Four in Georgia flag football. They will be taking on Portal at the Home Depot backyard at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. We got you covered later tonight on News 3. That's going to do it for your look at sports. Back over to you. And as always, so glad to share this morning with you today. Your time now, 518 Eastern, 418 Central. Coming up, a 15-year-old gunman and his parents are behind bars following our country's latest school shooting. Why authorities say they are all to blame for the four lives lost. We'll be right back. Hurt by a big truck? 1-800-CALL-KEN. One call, that's all.
on your side. You're watching WRBL News 3 this morning. Well, the parents of the alleged Michigan school shooter are in police custody, and now they're saying they were never on the run, as has been reported. Laura Podesta has more on where the couple was, was found and what they're saying about why they skipped a court appearance last week. Take a listen. Uh, this game ball goes to the whole Oxford community. All those were affected. Following their first win of the season, their first win in a year, the head coach of the Detroit Lions dedicated the game ball to all the victims of the Oxford, Michigan school shooting. Over the weekend, police arrested the parents of the 15 year old accused of going on the rampage. James and Jennifer Crumbly had been charged with involuntary manslaughter and failed to appear at an arraignment on Friday. They were found Saturday inside a Detroit art studio. It was a tip that led us to this location uh, and allowed us to do our work. Through an attorney, an artist connected to the studio says he did not know there were warrants out and thought he was just helping the couple escape unwanted attention and death threats. The couple's attorneys insist the two were going to turn themselves in. They were never fleeing prosecution. I want to make that very clear with the court. They were scared. They were terrified. They were not at home. They were figuring out what to do. The crumbly parents are accused of purchasing the handgun for their teenage son, Ethan, as an early Christmas present. Four students were killed in the massacre. Ethan's been charged as an adult with murder, terrorism, and other crimes. Laura Podesta, CBS News. We thank you for trusting News 3 this morning. We turn now to meteorologist Nicole Phillips, who joins us with a forecast you can plan your day around. Good morning, Nicole. Hey, good morning. So, just in, we have a dense fog advisory now for the county shaded in gray here. And again, it's because we are seeing our visibility uh, less than a mile in some locations. So, be careful this morning. Temperatures are sitting in the 50s and even low 60s, 61 degrees in Americas and also down towards East Bala. So, this is what I'm talking about here. This is why we have the dense fog advisory. I mean, my goodness, you step out the door this morning, and that is definitely going to slow you down. Also, something that's going to slow us down later on today, I'm tracking a cold front that will bring in a chance for some showers and also even some rubbles of thunder. Uh, yes, we could have a few spotty showers from now through at least midday. Better chance, though, coming in this afternoon into this evening as well. So your commute forecast, red light this morning because of the fog. Break by lunchtime, a spotty shower, not out of the question. Then we have that rain coming in along that cold front for our evening commute, so giving that a red light as well. Your seven-day forecast coming up in about 20 minutes. All righty. Thank you, Nicole. And right now we're following a number of other big stories for you this morning. We start by keeping an eye on the world where South Africans are protesting plans by Royal Dutch Shell to expand their oil exploration. They say doing so will threaten the marine wildlife on the coastal stretch. This comes after a South African court blocked efforts to stop the exploration. In a statement, Shell officials said their plan is approved and will significantly contribute to South Africa's energy security if resources are found. And keeping an eye on America, former Republican Senator Bob Dole of Kansas has died. Now, in February, it was announced that he had stage four lung cancer. In 36 years on Capitol Hill, he helped shape a range of policy issues from taxes to rights for the disabled. He was 98 years old. Keeping an eye on the South, the cruise ship that left with 10 cases of COVID-19 is back in New Orleans. According to the city, the cases were identified in both crew members and passengers. The Norwegian breakaway ship left the port on November 28th and traveled to Belize, Honduras, and Mexico with more than 3,200 people on board. Officials say everyone on board will be tested for COVID-19 before leaving. Keeping an eye on Alabama, as a result of the 2010 Deepwater Horizon oil spill, Alabama, Florida, and Mississippi are set to receive more than $103 million in BP oil spill settlement money for new and continued coastal projects. Now, according to the National Fish and Wildlife Foundation, the money will fund 11 new projects and extend two current ones along the Gulf shores. Alabama is getting more than $43 million of the settlement. And keeping an eye on Georgia. According to Politico, former U.S. Senator David Perdue is planning to challenge Georgia Governor Brian Kemp in the Republican primary next year. The announcement is expected to come as early as today. Now, Perdue lost his seat to, in the Senate to Democrat John Ossoff in the January runoff election earlier this year. Now, it's been reported he's been encouraged to run publicly uh, by former President Donald Trump. Meanwhile, other Republicans in the race include Governor Brian Kemp, 
former Democrat Vernon Jones and GOP activist Candace Taylor. Now, just last week, Democrat Stacey Abrams announced she would be running. So far, she's the only Democrat to throw her hat in the ring. And of course, if that changes, you'll be the first to know. We want to update you as soon as we can. So go ahead and download that news app and turn on those notifications. You do not want to miss out on any breaking news. Keeping an eye on Columbus, the fourth stop of our Holiday Heroes campaign continues this week. Our team will be at the Rivertown Ford on Whittlesey Boulevard in Columbus Wednesday, December 8th, two days away. We'll be accepting your donations of new or gently used cold weather gear for Valley Rescue Mission, as well as new and unwrapped toys for Santa's Castle and Fort Benning. We certainly hope to see you there. Coming up, a shooter on the run after a church shooting in Alabama. The victim's condition plus the latest on the search this morning. Next, the new COVID-19 variant has been discovered right here in Georgia. Details as to how it got here and what's next to stop the spread. Plus, if it's not one virus, it's two. Health officials weigh in on the things you can do to protect yourself from COVID-19 and the seasonal flu. We'll be right back. On your side, you're watching WRBL News 3 this morning. Well, leading us off this half hour, two people are recovering after a shooting in Columbus. The shooting happened on Clay Street and Harborson Drive yesterday evening. Now, EMS was on the scene shortly after 6 o'clock last night. When News 3 arrived on the scene, our reporter saw multiple shell casings on the ground. Columbus police placed at least 19 evidence markers nearby. According to police, the two victims are expected to be okay. This morning, Alabama police are searching for a man considered to be armed and dangerous after a shooting inside a church. According to the Jefferson County Sheriff's Office, a teen was shot at the Church of Jesus Christ and Later Day Saints in Vestavia Hills Friday night. The victim, identified as 18 year old Michael Faber of Dayton, Ohio, was taken to a local hospital as in a serious condition. Police say Faber was inside the gym with a group of people playing basketball. Faber was seen talking with an unknown person. Then moments later, he was shot multiple times and the shooter fled the building. Now, others in the building were not injured. Deputy Chief David Aggie says the shooter is in his mid-20s. If you know any additional information about this, in case you're encouraged to give your local authorities a call. I want to remind you to go ahead and download our news app. Don't forget to turn on those notifications. You don't want to miss out on important alerts about any breaking news. The newly detected Omicron variant of COVID-19 has been found right here in Georgia. That's according to Georgia's public health officials who confirm the fully vaccinated Georgian recently returned home from South Africa. They reportedly stayed in the state for two days before heading to New Jersey, where they're now in isolation. 
No additional Omicron cases have been discovered here in Georgia at this time, but health officials are working to identify close contacts. Meanwhile, COVID-19 infections are spiking, and a third of states are reporting seeing those Omicron cases. Now, new rules are now in effect for passengers arriving from overseas, so a lot is changing right now in the fight against COVID-19. Laura Podesta breaks it all down. As of this morning, all travelers coming to the U.S. must undergo a COVID-19 test within 24 hours of their departure. Previously, they had to be tested within three days of their flight. Definitely another challenge that's coming up in the way for travelers. The tighten restrictions come as the Omicron variant continues to spread. At least 17 states have reported Omicron-related infections. Many of the confirmed cases have been found in vaccinated people who reported having mild symptoms. But we really got to be careful before we make any determinations that it is less severe or it really doesn't cause any severe illness comparable to Delta. But thus far, the signals are a bit encouraging regarding the severity. Experts say, though, it's still crucial to determine if Omicron is more transmissible than other variants. Even if it is a mild disease, it's important that we still act fast now to take measures to control its spread, because even if we have a large number of cases that are mild, um, some of those individuals will need hospitalizations, they will need to be uh, go into ICU, and some people will die. Omicron's arrival has coincided with a spike in new COVID cases, up 19% in just two weeks. The number of new infections now tops 108,000 a day. The CDC says 99% of those cases are caused by the Delta variant, with unvaccinated people remaining the most at risk. And that was Laura Podesta reporting for us. You're watching News 3 this morning. We turn now to meteorologist Nicole Phillips for a look at that morning commute forecast. Nicole, we got some fog out there this morning. We do, and it is dense in some spots, so allow yourself some extra time. Temperatures are sitting in the 50s, so we've got 57 degrees right now out at Tumors Corner. Just a little bit of a light wind, so that is helping us out a little bit in terms of fog. But 53 degrees in Pine Mountain, 61 in America's also you follow for this morning. So looking at our school day outlook, so fog will be the issue this morning. We'll get a break by recess with a chance for a few spotty showers. Temperatures in the upper 60s, and then we're back into the low to middle 70s this afternoon for the ride home. But we'll have the chance for some showers and, yes, even some rumbles of thunder. It's been a while since we've heard thunder. Uh, but I'll have your seven day forecast coming up in the next 10 minutes. All righty. Thank you so much, Nicole. In the midst of the COVID 19 pandemic, experts want to warn you to not forget about the cold and flu season as well. Our News 3's Carissa Diagostino spoke with a local doctor about. Why remembering, the, why remembering to prevent both of these viruses is just as important around this time of the year. Good morning to you, Carissa. Good morning, Blake. According to the Center for Disease Control, there were 28,000 flu-related deaths in the year 2018 to 2019. That decreased by 8,000 from 2019 to 2020, and it's believed to be because of social distancing and mask protocol. Now doctors are concerned there could be a rise as these precautions relax. Cold and flu season started around September or October, and it can go until March. Doctors are urging people not to let the COVID-19-focused world make them forget about the regular cold and flu season, which can be deadly. Piedmont sports doctor, sports and medicine family doctor, Dr. Suraj Abdullah says precautions like practicing good hygiene, eating your vegetables, taking vitamins, exercising, and getting enough sleep can all help you build your immune system to guard against cold and flu. But there's one critical step that can help guard you against the flu infection as well. Even though you have the flu one time, you can still get the flu a second time. Uh, there's different strains of flu. It's a virus, so it's different, like different strains of colds, different strains of COVID. There's different strains of flu. Uh, so you can have flu A, and then the next time you can get flu B. Um, and so, yes, I definitely would encourage if you have the flu, go ahead and get vaccinated after you um, you're, you're asymptomatic or you don't have any symptoms. Dr. Abdullah is also encouraging you to continue to social distance and wear your mask because as we saw a decrease in flu cases last year when these practices were largely still in place across the country. And coming up in the next hour, we'll hear from Dr. Abdullah about why even if you've had the flu already this season, it's still important to get your flu vaccine. Back to you, Blake. All right. Thank you so much, Carissa. Columbus Health Leaders are working to make sure you stay healthy this season. Uh, this is what they're doing this week. The West Central Health District is taking vaccines on the road, and they are coming to you. They'll be administering flu and COVID-19 vaccines at mobile clinics throughout the week here in 
Columbus. In fact, every day this week. So here's a look at their scheduled stops. So if you're near your TV, you want to take a quick photo of this. Uh, this will also be up on our website a little bit later on this morning. And coming up in our six o'clock hour, we'll hear from Pam Kirkland, uh, who works at the West Central Health District, about uh, why they wanted to create this opportunity for Columbus for folks to get a COVID-19 vaccine or flu vaccine. And she'll break down all the details coming up in about an hour from now. Coming up next hour, uh, say goodbye to Frosty the Snowman and Silent Night. Not next hour, next break, excuse me. Experts say the two new Christmas jingles are topping the nice list. Ed Sheeran right there. We'll break it all down when we come back. On your side, this is News 3 This Morning. Well, welcome back to News 3 This Morning. Here is a collab I am thrilled about. Elton John and Ed Sheeran team up for some festival seasonal music, and an iconic film is being re-released for a whole new generation. Anthony Pura has your eye on entertainment this morning. Take a look. Your name? Paramount is re-releasing the dark coming-of-age comedy Harold and Maude in a special remastered Blu-ray edition to mark the film's 50th anniversary. Bud Court and the late Ruth Gordon star in the story about the unlikely friendship between Harold, a young man with an obsession with death, and Maude, a 79-year-old woman who can't get enough of life. The film, now a cult classic, is all about liberation. Liberation from one's, uh, I don't know, Contractions, you know, where, where one's being held down um, by either your mother or by society or the establishment, whatever. Where do the children play? Yusuf, formerly known as Cat Stevens, provided the movie's soundtrack. But, you know, time does fly, but music doesn't really die and it doesn't get old. So I think that that. that that's the message of, of my music, that's the message of the film. The Paramount Presents release contains commentary, an interview with Yusuf, and a movie poster all wrapped in collectible packaging. It's available tomorrow. The film Hip Hop Family Christmas follows a famous family trying to soften their image with a live Christmas special. Jamie Foxx produced a movie. Carrie Hilson stars as one of the daughters. This film is filled with a lot of hijinks uh, as we are trying to combat rumors and negativity. Hip Hop Family Christmas debuts today on VH1. So kiss me under the mistletoe. Ed Sheeran and Elton John have released a new single, Merry Christmas, to raise funds for the respective foundations. And ABBA is also out with its very first Christmas single, Little Things, about a happy Christmas morning. That's your eye on entertainment. Anthony Pura, CBS News, Los Angeles.
Ed Sheeran and Elton John, I don't know if it gets much better than that. Before we go to break, let's check back in on meteorologist Nicole Phillips for a look at your weather. Nicole, I got to ask you, is the Christmas tree up now? It is. It is finally up. We got it up this weekend. It doesn't feel like Christmas because it's been so warm. We're going to talk about our temperatures, plus we've got some fog to talk about. That's all coming up after the break. On your side, meteorologist Nicole Phillips has your first alert forecast. Well, good Monday morning. Unfortunately, we've got to talk about some fog. We now have a dense fog advisory through 9 a.m. Eastern time, and it's for the county shaded in gray here. This is why you can tell that we've got some dense fog out there with visibilities lower or less than a mile, maybe down to a fourth of a mile, and that's how much you can see out ahead of you. So notice that we look at Toomer's Corner here about maybe 20 minutes ago. It didn't look so bad, but now you can see the it looks a little bit hazy. So again, allow yourself some extra time this morning. 58 degrees out in Auburn, 51 degrees up in LaGrange, and 61 in Eufaula, also Americas. So pretty mild, honestly, to start off the morning. We've got some cloud cover pushing on in, and this is the cold front that will be moving in this afternoon, also into this evening. Now, along that front, some of you may experience some gusty winds, and notice we've got this marginal risk here out towards our west from Tuskegee Union Springs, including Auburn. Really, again, it's just going to be gusty winds, and that's going to be brief. The severe threat for this is extremely low for our area. Most of that is confined into portions of Louisiana and also into Mississippi. So let's track this for us. As we go from now through at least 10 a.m., we'll be dealing with the fog, maybe even a few spotty showers developing right around midday. But the actual line of storms that I'm tracking doesn't come in until about 2 to 3 p.m. And then it will linger through our evening commute as well. So this may slow us down once again. So our commutes just don't look too good for us today. But then by 8 p.m. is starting to move out of here. In fact, that front's actually going to stall out towards the south. So what that means for us on Tuesday is that we're going to keep clouds around, and we're also going to keep a few spotty showers around again on Tuesday. So for today, again, dense fog this morning. We'll see some improvements by the mid-morning hours. Not out of the question. We'll see a spotty shower by noon. 74 degrees today, so still above average for this time of the year. 75 degrees in Americas and 70 up in LaGrange. But you'll notice, though, on Tuesday, Tuesday, things change for us behind this front. We're going to see our temperatures down into the upper 50s, even low 60s for us. And again, that front that stalls out to our south will bring us the spotty showers on Tuesday, and then it gets its act together by Wednesday, bringing us more scattered storms, but staying unsettled and warming right on back up through the weekend. 
All righty, thank you so much, Nicole. Reading to children is critical for their development. In fact, it's recommended parents read aloud to them every day starting at birth. Now, in the digital age, many parents are turning to technology, of course, but as Bradley Blackburn shares, this could have an impact on their development. Take a listen. Yeah, he's ready for some fun. Alice Liao is mom to three children under four. She says story time is one of their favorite activities. Each kiddo gets to pick a book and um, we'll sit down on the couch and read the books before they officially go to bed. And she says the family has found reading from a book is more fun than reading on a digital device. We love it when books have like different textures. There are flaps for them to, you know, kind of play with and then cover and see. A new study in pediatrics compared the interactions of parents and children ages two to three when reading traditional books and tablet apps. Parents talked more to their children while reading a book, and children responded less to their parents using the tablet. Those kind of back and forth interactions between a parent and a child are like brain food for kids. They build the foundations of children's language and social and emotional development that really span a lifetime. Study author Dr. Tiffany Munzer is a developmental behavioral pediatrician at Michigan Medicine. She says with technology here to stay, parents should view digital media with their young children. Finding ways to ask open-ended questions about the digital content so that it relates it back to the child's experiences. So um, asking, oh, what do you see here on this? Not what will you do? Alice limits her children's screen time and says reading together is a bonding experience for everyone. Cuddling them while we're reading these stories, um, it just makes me feel really connected to them. She says with so many moments in the day interrupted by technology, it's nice for the family to curl up with a good book. Bradley Blackburn, CBS News, New York. Hey, well, thank you for being here with us on News 3 this morning. Coming up next break, a troubling trend nationwide. Americans, America's homicide rate is rising rapidly from more guns to fewer cops. We'll break down what could be driving this pattern. On your side, you're watching WRBL News 3 this morning. Well, 2021 has seen a growing wave of homicides in cities all across the country. Law enforcement experts blame a combination of things leading to this, from more guns and fewer cops. Jeff Pegas breaks down this troubling trend. It's been a violent year in Chicago's Cook County. Over 1,000 people have been murdered. In Philadelphia, over 500. Senseless violence, which often claims the lives of innocent children like eight year old PJ Evans. Hi, I'm 
on TV Jakes. In Prince George's County, Maryland. Killed in a barrage of gunfire during a family gathering. Antoine Dotson is PJ's uncle. An eight year old who was a promising student who had so many great things going for him to lose his life. Michael Harris and his Baltimore's police commissioner, where murders are also up. What do you think is behind this? Whether it's young people, whether it's older people, people solving their conflict with violence, namely gun violence. Harrison says another factor is ghost guns. His officers have seized more than 300 this year. People can order them online in parts, have the parts delivered to the home, assemble the gun in the home within an hour and have a fully functional gun. That cannot be traced. Another problem fewer police officers on the streets. After George Floyd's death in 2020, some cities like New York and Oakland cut police funding. We did a survey of a couple of hundred police departments showing retirements uh, increasing, resignations increasing, the workforce is shrinking. Three men have been charged in connection with PJ Evans's death. It's just straight gun violence at this point. Um, to where it's just senseless. Today, Antoine Dotson seeks comfort in his faith, but says even that's not enough. I know a lot of people say, you know, you turn to the church and, you know, it was time for him to gain his wings as an angel. I'm still struggling with losing him and not having him here in my presence. During the pandemic, a lot of counties and cities went months without trials or grand juries. Police say, Offenders started to believe that there weren't consequences for committing crimes. And so while the system slowed down, the criminals remained on the streets. Jeff Begay, CBS News, Washington. And here at News 3, we're always on your side. Meteorologist Nicole Phillips joins us now with what you need to know before you head out the door this morning. Hey, Nicole. Hey, good morning. So we've got temperatures sitting in the 50s and even 60s. It's not too bad of a start, but this is the issue here, some dense fog. So that is going to slow you down. You can see it here out at Toomer's Corner. So 62 degrees by 10 a.m. Still getting into the middle 70s today. Cold front coming through this afternoon, bringing us that chance for some showers and even some rumbles of thunder after midday, right around 2 to 3 p.m. And that will last through at least our evening commute, unfortunately. Your seven-day forecast coming up after the top 10. All righty. Thank you so much, Nicole. And before you go, here are your top 10 stories of the morning. Starting with number 10, our Holiday Heroes campaign continues this Wednesday, December 8th. Our News 3 team will be at Rivertown Ford on Whittlesey Boulevard in Columbus, accepting all of your generous donations for two really great nonprofits right here in the Chattahoochee Valley. We certainly hope to see you there. Number nine, International Women's Month is coming up in March, and News 3 wants to recognize the remarkable women in our community. Nominees are being accepted now through December 31st. So to nominate a remarkable woman in your life, you can fill out the nomination form on our website. Number eight, middle and high schoolers all across Georgia and Alabama raced battery-powered cars on Saturday. The F-24 Santa Sprints competition stretched along Front Avenue and Bay Avenue in downtown Columbus. The event was packed, was excuse me, backed by Green Power Columbus and run by the Sports Council. Number seven, former U.S. Senator David Perdue could announce his plans to run for Georgia governor as early as today. That's being reported by Politico. Other Republicans in the race include Governor Brian Kemp, former Democrat Vernon Jones, and GOP activist Candace Taylor. Democrat Stacey Abrams announced she's running last week. Number six, winter is upon us, and so is the cold and flu season. And this year, health leaders say getting your flu shot is as important as it's always been. Last year's COVID-19 precautions kept thousands of people out of the hospital. So now with precautions easing, many fear that a spread of the flu virus could happen this year. Number five, this week, the West Central Health District is making getting vaccinated a little bit easier for you. They're actually coming to you. They'll be administering flu and COVID-19 vaccines at mobile vaccine sites all this week in Columbus. That's a list, a list of the locations they'll be at this week. So if you want to take a quick picture of that, or you can find it on our website. Number four, starting today, all international travelers coming to the U.S. must undergo a COVID-19 test within 24 hours of their departure. Previously, they had been tested within three days of their flight. That now changes to just 24 hours. Meanwhile, a South African travel ban is still in place. Number three, the Omicron variant of COVID-19 continues to spread. According to state health officials, a Georgian tested positive for the strain yesterday. The person had returned from South Africa and stayed in Georgia for about two days before heading to New Jersey, where they are now quarantining. Number two, Jefferson County authorities are searching for a man said to be armed and dangerous. 
after a shooting at a church. They confirm 18-year-old Michael Faber was inside the Church of Jesus Christ at Latter-day Saints when he was shot Friday night. The shooter fled the scene. No one else was injured, but Faber was taken to a local hospital as in, and is now in serious condition. And number one, two people are recovering right here in Columbus after a shooting this weekend. According to police, they were shot on Clay Street and Harborson Drive yesterday evening. Authorities say the two victims are expected to be okay. The investigation is still ongoing. And those are your top 10 stories this morning. And of course, meteorologist Nicole Phillips is on top of your final forecast this hour. Hey, Nicole. Hey, good morning. So dense fog this morning. That's going to slow you down. We'll be in the 70s today, but tracking a cold front that will bring us some showers, maybe even some rumbles of thunder after midday. 59 on Tuesday, staying unsettled for the remainder of the week. Alrighty, thank you, Nicole. Before we go, time now to announce the next winner of our coffee mug contest. Today's winner is Alicia Hughley. Congratulations. And we want to thank our morning mug sponsors, Wow Super Fast Internet and Wild Animal Safari. And you can pick up your coffee mug at our News 3 studio at the address you see right there on your screen. And don't forget, you got to be in it to win it. So head to our website, WRBL.com. We thank you for watching News 3. We will take a quick break, and our 6 o'clock hour is not far. So stay with us. We'll be right back. Time now for your forecast first. WRBL News 3 First Alert Weather. Well, we've got some fog to start off our morning commute. We'll talk about it coming up in the next three minutes. Alrighty, thank you, Nicole. Straight ahead, a weekend shooting leaves two people injured. New details into the ongoing investigation this hour. Next, new COVID-19 variant has been discovered right here in the Peach State. Why health leaders say this is a cause for concern. Plus, beginning today, new travel requirements to help stop the spread of that new COVID-19 variant. What you need to know if you're planning to leave the country anytime soon. News 3 This Morning starts right now. On your side, this is News 3 This Morning. Well, good morning to you. Rise and shine. You're waking up to December 6, 2021. I'm Blake Eason. Great to be back with you. My co-anchor Crystal Whitman has the morning off. Leading us off today, two people are recovering after a shooting this weekend right here in Columbus. The shooting happened on Clay Street and Harborson Drive yesterday evening. Now, News 3 saw multiple shell casings on the ground. 
That was around when EMS was on the scene shortly after 6 p.m. last night. Now Columbus police have put out about 19 evidence markers, as you can see right there. Now, according to police, the two victims are expected to be OK, but the investigation is ongoing. So stick with News 3 as we work to gather more details on this developing story. And the quickest way for you to be updated is to go ahead and download our news app. So don't forget to turn on those notifications. You don't want to miss out on important alerts about any breaking news. Turning now to the pandemic, the newly detected Omicron variant of COVID-19 has been discovered right here in Georgia. That's according to Georgia's public health agency who confirms the fully vaccinated person recently traveled home from South Africa. They reportedly stayed here in the Peach State for about two days before heading to New Jersey, where they are now in isolation. No additional Omicron cases have been identified just yet, but health officials are working to identify close contacts. And this comes as cases of the Omicron variant continue to spread across the country. At least 17 states have reported Omicron related infections, and many of the confirmed cases have been found in vaccinated people who reported having mild symptoms. Now, experts say it's still crucial to determine if Omicron is more transmissible than other variants. Take a listen. But we really got to be careful before we make any determinations that it is less severe or it really doesn't cause any severe illness comparable to Delta. But thus far, the signals are a bit encouraging regarding the severity. Now, Omicron's arrival comes with a spike in new COVID-19 cases, up 19% in just two weeks. The number of new infections now tops 108,000 a day. The CDC says 99% of those cases are caused by the Delta variant, with unvaccinated people remaining the most at risk. And new this morning, travelers heading to the U.S. need to add a negative COVID-19 test to their packing list much quicker than before. The new policy requires a negative test result within one calendar day of an international flight back into the U.S. Regardless of your vaccination status or what country you're traveling from, this used to be a three-day situation prior to returning home. Meanwhile, the Surgeon General is standing firm on the restrictions previously announced on travel from countries in Southern Africa. Take a listen. These are meant to be temporary measures. Nobody wants them to be on for any longer than they need to be. And that's why we're continuously reevaluating them so that we can get them off as soon as it's appropriate. Now, they did not comment on when the ban may be lifted. Of course, we'll continue to update you on that. And it's always great to have you here with us on News 3 this morning. Meteorologist Nicole Phillips joins us now with a wake up forecast to get you rolling on this Monday in December. Nicole, it's not feeling like December. It doesn't. It's been so warm. We've been in the 70s, which is about 10 degrees above where we should be for this time of the year. But this morning we are dealing with some fog and we've got a dense fog advisory that's at least through 9 a.m. Eastern time. Here's a look at visibility. I mean, it's dense and you can see that here. So that is going to slow you down. When we look out at Phoenix City Amphitheater, it just continues to drop and drop. So again, this morning, maybe an extra 15, now even 20 minutes to your commute. 52 degrees up in the Grange. Some of us are still in the low 60s uh, down towards you fall and also Americas. But I'm tracking this cold front that will be moving in this afternoon and also this evening. That's going to give us a chance for some showers and even some rumbles of thunder. So still warm today, 68 degrees by midday, 74 degrees by 4 p.m. Again, with that chance for some showers and even a few rumbles of thunder, your seven day forecast coming up in the next 10 minutes. Alrighty, thank you so much, Nicole. Keeping an eye on COVID-19 as part of the Biden administration's new plan to, com to combat the coronavirus, the White House is offering free testing and reimbursements for at-home COVID-19 tests. President Biden is requesting private health insurers to reimburse the cost of those over-the-counter testing kits. The government will also buy another 25 million tests for clinics and health centers to offer to those without insurance. And we're not just fighting one virus, it's two. From COVID-19 to the seasonal flu, here we go. Doctors are urging you to not forget about it while navigating the ongoing pandemic. Last year, there were 20,000 flu related deaths. That's down by 8,000 deaths compared to the 2018-2019 flu season when COVID-19 precautions had not yet begun. Many of those precautions, doctors say, saved lives. Take a listen. Last year, we saw that the cold and flu season really wasn't that bad because a lot of people were wearing masks. And so that is a benefit of wearing a mask is you prevent those common cold and flu type of things. And, you know, your cold symptoms are totally different than your flu symptoms. But 
the flu can be really serious. And so we can prevent that by wearing masks, wear your mask. If you can prevent that by social distancing, go ahead and social distance. Um, that, that just does not apply to COVID. Now, Dr. Abdullah says getting your flu shot is the best way to stay healthy this winter. And this week, the West Central Health District is making getting vaccinated a little easier by coming directly to you. They'll be administering flu and COVID-19 vaccines at mobile vaccine clinics throughout Columbus every day this week. So take a look at their scheduled stops. That'll be on our website a little bit later on this morning, but you can go ahead and snap a picture of that right now if you're near your television and coming up in our six o'clock hour in about 30 minutes or so. We'll talk to West Central Health District's Pam Kirkland about this vaccine opportunity. And we thank you so much for trusting News 3 this morning as your favorite source right when you wake up. Coming up, you might want to check your refrigerator. A popular lunch meat is being recalled. We'll tell you all about it and what to look out for. But first, here's meteorologist Nicole Phillips for a quick look at your Monday weather. Hey, Nicole. Hey, good morning. So we've got some dense fog this morning, this afternoon and evening. We'll have a cold front coming through that will give us a chance for some showers and even storms. Temperature still in the 70s today, but cooler on Tuesday. Your seven day forecast coming up at 13 minutes past the hour. News 3 is on your side with Crystal Whitman, Blake Eason, and meteorologist Nicole Phillips has your first alert forecast. On your side, you're watching WRBL News 3 this morning. Well, welcome into News 3 this morning. Saudi Arabia's decision to raise oil prices could send gas prices even higher than they already are. The kingdom hiked the cost on crude exports to the U.S. and Asia by about 80 cents a barrel. Now, Sunday's increase came less than a week after OPEC announced it would continue to increase output. Analysts said the move suggests Saudi Arabia expects global demand to keep climbing. Alexander and Hormong are recalling more than 240,000 pounds of ham and pepperoni products because of a possible Lysteria contamination. The affected meats were sold nationwide under a variety of brand names, including Welshire and Butcher Boy. The items are all fully cooked and have an ESTM 101 Two five stamped inside the USDA's inspection mark. Again, that number is M10125. That's what you're going to be looking for if you happen to maybe have one of these packages in your refrigerator. The hams should be discarded or returned to the store for a complete refund. And it's not just adults who can have fun while driving a Tesla. Here they go again. The electric car maker is now selling four wheel ATVs for children. The cyber quad for kids goes for 1900 bucks. Shipping takes about four weeks for it to arrive, but that won't be happening anytime soon because it is currently sold out. Tesla says it's meant for children ages eight and older. The battery has an estimated range of about 15 miles and the vehicle can reach a top speed of 10 miles per hour. My bicycle certainly did not go that fast when I was growing up. Looks like it could be pretty fun right there. And that is your morning consumer news. Your time now 610 Eastern, 510 Central. Also time to check back in. Meteorologist Nicole Phillips for a look at your weather right now. 
Well, this morning we've got a foggy start, but we'll also have some showers and even rumbles of thunder for our evening commute. I'll time it all out for you coming up after the break. On your side, meteorologist Nicole Phillips has your first alert forecast. Well, good Monday morning. We are 13 minutes past the hour. We've got some fog to talk to you about, and unfortunately, it's during our morning commute when we're getting ready for work and school, so you'll need to add on some extra time. So that dense fog advisory is through 9 a.m. Eastern time, really for our Georgia counties, and this is why, even though some parts of Alabama, we don't have that dense fog advisory. We're still seeing some dense fog. So again, allow yourself some extra time this morning. Here's a look out at Phoenix City Amphitheater. Now, the second thing that I've got to talk to you about will be the cold front that we've got coming through later on today. So now it's not too bad. We're sitting in the 50s and even low 60s, 61 in Americas and also Eufaula. But this is the front that will be moving in later on this afternoon into this evening. So the best time right around 2 or 3 p.m and then lasting through our evening commute. And you can see thunderstorms this morning in portions of Tennessee, also down into Mississippi. Again, sliding off towards the east. Now, initially when it comes through, some gusty winds will be possible. So we do have this marginal risk for just a slim portion here of eastern Alabama from Tuskegee, Union Springs, and also Auburn. Most of that severe weather is going to stay off towards our west as we go into the day. So let's track this for you. A few spotty showers not out of the question right around midday. Take the umbrella though because this is what you can expect right around 2 to 3 p.m. Here comes that line then pushing in as we go towards about 5 p.m. So that's our evening commute, but it's out of here by at least 8 p.m. Still a few spotty showers are possible. What's going to happen though for Tuesday is that this front will actually stall out to our south and that means we're going to keep the cloud cover and also the chance for a few stray showers on Tuesday morning even into the afternoon. So temperatures today warming up 68 degrees by noon, 74 degrees by 4 p.m. So still warm, still above average, even though we've got that front coming through. We won't actually feel the effects of that front in terms of our temperatures until Tuesday. And you'll notice that here that yes, we're in the 70s today we will be in the upper 50s on Tuesday. So 59 degrees for the high temperature that front will actually move on Wednesday and that will cause us to have another round of scattered storms. This time looks like to be in the morning and we're still warming up 71 on Friday, 76 degrees on Saturday. Alrighty, thank you so much, Nicole. Over in sports, after an incredible season all across the country, we now know college football's final four. Jack Patterson breaks it all down for us this morning. Take a listen. 
Good morning, everyone. With a look at your morning sports, I'm Jack Patterson. Here we are, the first Sunday in December. Four teams now know they will get an opportunity to host college football, the hoist college football's top prize. Here are the semifinal matchups for this year's college football playoff. In the first semifinal will be the newly crowned number one team in the country, the Alabama Crimson Tide, fresh off of winning the SEC title for the 10th time under Nick Saban. They will be in Dallas for the Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic, and they will face Cincinnati, the American Athletic Conference champions, the first ever group of five team to make it to the playoffs. This game will be at 3.30 Eastern on New Year's Day. And in the other semifinal, it will be the second-ranked Michigan Wolverines, champions of the Big Ten, taking on the former number one team in the country, the Georgia Bulldogs, in the Capital One Orange Bowl, also on New Year's Eve in Miami. Michigan hammered Iowa 42-3 to win the Big Ten, while Georgia was undefeated until falling to Alabama in the SEC Championship on Saturday. This game will be at 7.30 Eastern on New Year's Eve. The winners will play each other in the National Championship game January 10th in Indianapolis. Now here's the rest of the New Year's, New Year's Six Bowl lineup. In Atlanta, it will be Michigan State and the ACC champion Pitt Panthers in the Peach Bowl on December 30th. In the Fiesta Bowl is Notre Dame and Oklahoma State on New Year's Day. In the Rose Bowl, also on New Year's Day, Ohio State taking on Pac-12 champion Utah in Pasadena. And the Sugar Bowl in New Orleans is Ole Miss taking on Big 12 champion Baylor. Now let's check out some other notable bowls for teams in our area. Auburn won't have to travel far for their bowl. They'll take on Houston in the Birmingham Bowl at Protective Stadium. That's on December 28th at noon Eastern. And the Georgia State Panthers will take on Ball State in the Camellia Bowl in Montgomery. That's on Christmas Day, 2.30 Eastern at the Crafted Bowl. And a quick reminder that for the latest sports news and late breaking headlines, you can follow the News 3 Sports team over on Twitter. There you can find game highlights, score alerts, and much more. You can find us at WRBL Sports and follow us there whenever we're not on air. And be sure to stay tuned to News 3 Sports today. The Pacelli Lady Vikings in the Final Four in Georgia flag football. They will be taking on Portal at the Home Depot backyard at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. We got you covered later tonight on News 3. That's going to do it for your look at sports. Back over to you. And as always, so glad to share this morning with you today. Your time now, 618 Eastern, 518 Central. Coming up, a 15-year-old gunman and his parents are behind bars following our country's latest school shooting. Why authorities say they are all to blame for the four lives lost. We'll be right back. Hurt by a big truck? 1-800-CALL-KEN. One call, that's all.
on your side. You're watching WRBL News 3 this morning. Well, the parents of the alleged Michigan school shooter are in police custody, and now they're saying they were never on the run, as it has been reported. Laura Podesta has more on where the couple was found and what they're saying about why they skipped a court appearance last week. Take a listen. Uh, this game ball goes to the whole Oxford community. All those were affected. Following their first win of the season, their first win in a year, the head coach of the Detroit Lions dedicated the game ball to all the victims of the Oxford, Michigan school shooting. Over the weekend, police arrested the parents of the 15-year-old accused of going on the rampage. James and Jennifer Crumbly had been charged with involuntary manslaughter and failed to appear at an arraignment on Friday. They were found Saturday inside a Detroit art studio. It was a tip that led us to this location uh, and allowed us to do our work. Through an attorney, an artist connected to the studio says he did not know there were warrants out and thought he was just helping the couple escape unwanted attention and death threats. The couple's attorneys insist the two were going to turn themselves in. They were never fleeing prosecution. I want to make that very clear with the court. They were scared. They were terrified. They were not at home. They were figuring out what to do. The crumbly parents are accused of purchasing the handgun for their teenage son, Ethan, as an early Christmas present. Four students were killed in the massacre. Ethan's been charged as an adult with murder, terrorism, and other crimes. Laura Podesta, CBS News. Now, the Crumblies and their son are all inside the same jail. The parents pleaded not guilty to the charges and are being kept on a $500,000 bond after they skipped Friday's arraignment. Of course, we'll continue to follow that story for you. But right now, you're watching News 3 this morning. Time now to turn to meteorologist Nicole Phillips for a look at that forecast. You can plan your day around. Good morning, Nicole. Hey, good morning. So watching some areas of fog and it's pretty dense. Here's a live look right now out at Phoenix City Amphitheater. Dense fog advisory now extended over into our Alabama County. So I'm going to have to take, check to see how long that one will last. But for the ones for our Georgia counties here lasting through 9 a.m. Eastern time in the fog is dense. Oh, please extra 10, maybe 15, 20 minutes to your morning commute. So we've got the 50s to even low 60s this morning. Rain chances really ramp up though later on today because of a passage of a cold front. Really from 2 to about 8 p.m. is the best timing for that. Looking at your commute forecast, red light this morning because of the fog break this afternoon, right around lunchtime, I should say. A spotty shower to not out of the question. Then that cold front swinging through for our evening commute. Seven day forecast in 20 minutes. Alrighty, thank you so much, Nicole. And right now we're following a a number of other big stories for you this morning. We start by keeping an eye on America, where former Republican Senator Bob Dole of Kansas has died. In February, Dole announced that he had stage four lung cancer. In 36 years on Capitol Hill, Dole helped shape a range of policy issues from taxes to rights for the disabled. Bob Dole was 98. Keeping an eye on the South, the cruise ship that left with 10 cases of COVID-19. Back in New Orleans, according to the city, the cases were identified in both crew members and passengers. The Norwegian breakaway ship left the port on November 28th and traveled to Belize, Honduras and Mexico with more than 3,200 people on board. Officials say everyone on board will be tested for COVID-19 before leaving the ship. Keeping an eye on Alabama as a result of the 2010 Deepwater Horizon oil spill, Alabama, Florida and Mississippi are set to receive more than $103 million in BP oil spill settlement money for new and continued coastal projects. According to the National Fish and Wildlife Foundation, the money will fund 11 new projects and extend two current ones along the Gulf Shores. Alabama is getting more than $43 million as a part of that settlement. And keeping an eye on Georgia. According to Politico, former U.S. Senator David Perdue plans to challenge Georgia Governor Brian Kemp in the Republican primary next year. The announcement is expected to come as early as today. Now, Perdue lost his Senate seat uh, to Dem Democrat John Ossoff in the January runoff election earlier this year. It's been reported he's been encouraged to run by former President Donald Trump. Meanwhile, other Republicans in the race include Governor Brian Kemp, former Democrat Vernon Jones, and GOP activist Candace Taylor. Just last week, Democrat Stacey Abrams announced that she would be running for governor as well. So far, she's the only Democrat to throw her hat in the ring. And of course, if that changes, as we know, the race in Georgia will be changing as we get closer to those primaries. You'll want to make sure you stay connected with us here on News 3. So go ahead and download our news app available in the Google Play or Apple App Store. Coming up, a shooter on the run. 
After a weekend shooting at a church in Alabama, the victim's condition plus the latest on that search this morning. Next, the new COVID-19 variant has been discovered in Georgia. Details as to how it got here in the first place and what's next to stop the spread. Plus, if it's not one virus, it's two. Health officials weigh in on how to protect yourself from COVID-19 and the seasonal flu when we come back. On your side, you're watching WRBL News 3 this morning. Leading us off this half hour, two people are recovering after a shooting in Columbus. The shooting happened on Clay Street and Harborson Drive yesterday evening. Now, EMS was on the scene after about 6 o'clock last night. So when News 3 arrived on the scene, our reporters saw multiple shell casings on the ground. Columbus police placed at least 19 evidence markers, as you can see right there. According to Columbus, the two victims are expected to be okay. And this morning, Alabama police are searching for a man considered to be armed and dangerous after a shooting inside a church. According to the Jefferson County Sheriff's Office, a teen was shot at the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter day Saints in Vestavia Hills Friday night. The victim, identified as 18 year old Michael Faber of Dayton, Ohio, was taken to UAB Hospital and is in serious condition. Police say Faber was inside the gym with a group of people playing basketball. Faber was then seen talking with an unknown person. Then moments later, he was shot multiple times and the shooter fled the building. Now others in the building were not injured. Deputy Chief David Aggie says the shooter is in his mid 20s. If you know any additional information about this ongoing investigation, you're encouraged to contact your local authorities. And of course, if this investigation changes or any updates come to our newsroom, you'll be the first to know about it by downloading our news app. You do not want to miss out on important alerts about any breaking news. And the newly detected Omicron variant of COVID-19 has been detected right here in the Peach State. That's according to Georgia's public health agency who confirmed the fully vaccinated Georgian recently returned home from South Africa. They reportedly stayed in the state for two days before heading to New Jersey, where they're now in isolation. Now, no additional Omicron cases have been identified in Georgia just yet, but health officials are working to identify close contacts. Meanwhile, with COVID-19 infections spiking and a third of states reporting Omicron cases, new rules are now in effect for passengers arriving from overseas. Certainly a lot changing in the fight against COVID-19. Laura Podesta breaks it all down for you. As of this morning, all travelers coming to the U.S. must undergo a COVID-19 test within 24 hours of their departure. Previously, they had to be tested within three days of their flight. Definitely another challenge that's coming up in the way for travelers. The tightened restrictions come as the Omicron variant continues to spread. 
At least 17 states have reported Omicron-related infections. Many of the confirmed cases have been found in vaccinated people who reported having mild symptoms. But we really got to be careful before we make any determinations that it is less severe or it really doesn't cause any severe illness comparable to Delta. Omicron's arrival has coincided with a spike in new COVID cases, up 19% in just two weeks. The number of new infections now tops 108,000 a day. The CDC says 99% of those cases are caused by the Delta variant, with unvaccinated people remaining the most at risk. Laura Podesta, CBS News. Now in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic, experts are warning you to not forget about the cold and flu season as well. Our News 3's Carissa Agostino spoke with a local doctor about why remembering to prevent this virus is just as important as any other. She joins us now. Good morning to you, Carissa. Good morning, Blake. According to the Center for Disease Control, there were 28,000 flu-related deaths in the 2018-2019 year. That decreased by 8,000 from 2019 to 2020. Now it's believed because of social distancing and mask wearing we saw that decrease. Now doctors are concerned there could be a rise as these precautions relax. Cold and flu season starts around September or October and can go all the way until March. Doctors are urging people not to let the COVID-19 focused world make them forget about the regular cold and flu season, which can be deadly. Piedmont sports and family medicine physician Dr. Suraj Abdullah says precautions like practicing good hygiene, eating your vegetables, taking vitamins, exercising and getting enough sleep can all help you build your immune system to guard against cold and flu. But there's also one critical step that can help guard you against the flu infection. Preventative wise though, like I said, the flu vaccination is very, very important. Uh, a lot of people think about flu, it can last for five to 10 days, but sometimes people go into the hospital with flu and they can have pneumonia. So it's very important to uh, try to prevent it. Dr. Abdullah is also encouraging you to continue to social distance and wear your mask because as we saw a decrease in flu cases last year when these practices were largely still in place across the country. He also says if you have the flu or cold and you have the option to work or stay home, doing so will help stop the spread of the viruses. Back to you, Blake. All right. Thank you so much, Chris. A very important information right there. Coming up, we'll talk to West Central Health District's Pamela Kirkland about a vaccine opportunity coming straight to you. You're watching News 3 this morning. We turn now to meteorologist Nicole Phillips for a look at that morning commute forecast. Nicole, got some heavy fog out there this morning. We do, and here's a look out at Phoenix City Amphitheater right now. You can see that it is dense, and so we do have a dense fog advisory through this morning, 9 a.m. Eastern Time, also 9 a.m. Central Time is when we'll start to see those advisories lifted. But again, allow yourself... A a little bit of extra time this morning, whether it's 15, maybe even 20 minutes. We're sitting in the 50s to even low 60s this morning. Red light because of the fog. We do have uh, some clouds around for lunchtime in the upper 60s. A few spotty showers not out of the question. Then we'll be watching a line of showers and even some rumbles of thunder for our evening commute. Unfortunately, we're still in the middle 70s. All of your seven day forecast coming up in the next 10 minutes. All righty. Thank you so much, Nicole, and we thank you for trusting News 3 this morning. We'll take a quick break and we will be right back.
All righty, folks, you know what time it is. Time now for Bear's Wake Up Call. Just the person I want to see this morning. Good morning <laughs> to you, Bear. You know, I was off Friday, and it just feels like I haven't seen you in so long. So it's good to yeah. see you. Well, I mean, it's that time of year where, you know, you may take a day off and Crystal takes a day off. So I, I never know. But I'm always glad to see whoever's there, and it's good to see you this morning. God bless you. I love you, and I hope you had a great weekend. Did you? Oh, man, I, I had a fantastic <laughs> weekend, as I was just telling you before we came to you. I went to New York City with some close friends. It was a very spontaneous trip. All of us wanted to experience Christmas in New York. I've seen it in movies, TV shows, online, and I yeah. got to tell you, it was just as magical as I hoped and dreamed it would be. We saw the Rockefeller tree. Uh, wow. I skated in Central Park. Like li literally in Home Alone, uh, did not fall, might I add. I think that's very important to share. It was yeah. a lot of practice in, in that. I, I did go very slow. Um, uh -huh. Lots of lights. The Saks Fifth Ave light show was amazing. We did it on a very, very low budget. But even then, all of uh -huh. us piling into a hotel, 100% worth it. I can't wait to go back. Have you ever been to New York at Christmas time? No. I mean, back when I was doing comedy, I made a wrong turn and ended up going through the Bronx. That scared me to death. But I've never been in, in New York City. But I do want to speak for me, uh, Carissa, and, and Nicole. We wish we had the money to go to New York, don't we, gang? Okay, okay. Here, here's, here, here's the thing. I'm willing, to, I'm, willing to, I'm willing to break down each price point. I'm telling uh, you, I don't no, know if you would be willing or want to go at the price point that we went. I think it was almost borderline unsafe at, at oh, the Mount Oh, no, no, no. I'm, I'm picking at you, man. I'm picking uh, at you. We it, did it you know, on a very, very low budget. No. But again, it was it was worth it. We were. The fact that you went up there, I think it's great. It's, so everybody needs to experience it at least once. And I wasn't making that up. I've never been. I would like to go. And I know my wife would like to go also. Yes. Bucket list item. So maybe next year we'll plan a trip with you, Bear. Okay. Be great. George Clooney recently turned down $35 million for one day's work. One day's work. I read that there, and I, I didn't want it to be true. Do you have more well, details it, as to why he did this? Yeah, it was an airline commercial, but it was for, and even though this country is an ally of ours, he said the country still engages in question, mm. questionable practices. Okay. So he and his wife, Amal, who's an international human rights attorney, decided it was best to pass up that opportunity for $35 million for a one-time commercial. So it sounds like it was obviously more of a personal decision that, you know, he, yeah. had, he had to make with him, him and his family. And, you know, at the yeah. end of the day, I got to respect that. You know, at the end of the day, sure. uh, we, we all have moments in life where we say, do we want to do something for money if it contradicts our personal beliefs? So that's exactly right. Do. Exactly right. Amen. Hey, in a new survey, 50 percent of the people say they've hidden Christmas gifts and they have been found by their kids. The most popular place to hide gifts is in a bedroom closet. Well, guess they did another survey. Guess where is the first place kids look? Bedroom closet. Parents, we got to come up with better ways to hide these gifts. I, you know I, what I mean? I, I speak from personal experience. That was the yeah. first place I looked. Uh, and, then, <laughs> and, then, and then I think after the closet, it was under the bed. Uh, so yeah. clearly, uh, I, I didn't get my creative juices from my mother. Okay, there, oh. there wasn't much creative thought into where to put the gifts. And then eventually she said, if you keep searching for the gifts, I will not give you gifts. So that was the quickest way for me to stop. Well, and those are just the gifts that you share. You know, Santa brings his gifts. He, he knows where to hide his. He hides right. his at the North Pole. Uh, Zoom is releasing some new features. One of them makes it easier for hosts to see which guests have and haven't joined, which would snitch on people who like to sneak in to big meetings late. Y'all better watch it. There's a new Zoom feature coming. Your bosses don't need to find out about this one. See, there's just some there's just some updates that are just not necessary. You know, yeah. why fix something that wasn't broken? People were still yeah. getting in, whether they were getting in two minutes late, five minutes late, they were still getting into the meeting. Maybe I'm also speaking from personal experience on that one as well, Pear. <laughs> All right, quickly, and I'll get out of here. A man in Italy tried to dodge a COVID-19 vaccine by wearing a fake arm. I am not making this a fake arm. Obviously, the nurses figured it out immediately. The guy admitted he was doing something wrong, and he's also looking at possible criminal charges. I'm out of here. God bless you. I love you, and I hope you all have a great day. Bear, I have a lot more questions about the fake arm, but unfortunately, <laughs> I know. we are out of time. Uh, maybe I'll follow up with you on that one tomorrow because that, okay. that's a story I haven't heard yet. And, um, a fake arm. <laughs> yeah, a fake arm. And, and, and folks, we, I think we really are seeing it all these days. Uh, Bear, yep. thank you so much for being here with us this morning. Happy Monday to you. Certainly hope to see you right back here tomorrow. You. Thank you for trusting News 3. We'll take a quick break, and we will be right back.
your side. Meteorologist Nicole Phillips has your first alert forecast. Well, good Monday morning. Here we are 43 minutes past the hour and we've got some dense fog. I know we've got our morning commute going on work, school, and this is what we have to deal with. So dense fog advisory through 9 a.m. Eastern time and also 9 a.m. Central time. And so that means we're seeing visibility less than a mile. So be careful this morning. Allow yourself an extra 10 to 15 minutes, maybe even 20 minutes. Here's a look out at Toomer's Corner right now and you can see that the visibility is a little bit lower temperatures. However, However, it's not too bad. We're sitting in the 50s to even low 60s, 61 degrees in Eufaula and also Americas. But I'm tracking a cold front that will be moving in later on today, and it's going to give us a chance for some showers and also a few rumbles of thunder. Now, as it approaches our area, it will weaken a little bit, but a few of us may experience a little bit of gusty wind as it does initially move in. So that's anywhere from Tuskegee, Union Springs, and also Auburn. The severe weather will stay well to our west in the portions of uh, Louisiana and also Mississippi. So let's track this cold front here. A few spotty showers not out of the question really this morning into about midday. The initial line starts to move through right around 2 to 3 p.m. It will be right around our evening commute as well. Some of that rain could be heavy, so you'll need the umbrellas, but also you need to pack a little bit of patience, not only this morning, but also for our evening commute. By 8 p.m., it's out of here. The front actually stalls out, so that means on Tuesday, we're going to be left with some cloud cover, but also a few spotty showers as well. So looking at today, despite the fact we have that front coming in, it's still going to warm out out ahead of it. 68 degrees by midday, 74 degrees by 4 p.m., so our temperatures are still above average for this time of the year and letting you in on a little bit of a secret here. It's going to kind of stay this way for the next few weeks as well. 74 degrees in Columbus today and 75 out in America. So we'll drop down tomorrow on Tuesday into the upper 50s. 64 degrees on Wednesday as that front gets its act together, starts to move out, bringing us another chance for some scattered showers and storms. But then this is what I'm talking about here. Briefly cools down, then we're back into the 70s by the end of the week and into the first half of the weekend. Alrighty, thank you so much, Nicole. Reading to children is critical for their development. In fact, it's recommended parents read aloud to them every day beginning at birth. However, in the digital age, many parents are turning to technology, of course. A new study in pediatrics compared the interactions of parents and children ages 2 to 3 when reading traditional books and tablet apps. It found parents talked more to their children while reading a book, and children responded less to their parents when using a tablet. Take a listen. Those kind of back and forth interactions between a parent and a child are like brain food for kids. They build the foundations of children's language and social and emotional development that really span a lifetime. Dr. Munzer adds with technology here to stay, parents should view digital media with their young children and ask them questions about the stories that they want to read, hoping to make it a little bit more involving for them. We thank you for trusting News 3 this morning. Coming up from the seasonal flu to COVID-19, getting vaccinated is, well, getting easier. We're on your side with a mobile clinic coming to a neighborhood near you starting today. We'll break it all down when we come back.
on your side. You're watching WRBL News 3 this morning. Well, if you're looking to get a COVID-19 or flu vaccine, a mobile clinic could be rolling into your neighborhood starting today. From the West Central Health District, Pam Kirkland joins us live in studio to discuss more. Good morning to you, Pam. Pam, I'm starting to think you enjoy getting up at this time. You're spending so much time with us these oh, days. Oh, no, no, no. I do not enjoy it. <laughs> You're like, I, I'm here because I have to, have to be here. Pam, I always appreciate your honesty. Let's <laughs> let's get straight to it. What is the mobile health clinic uh, and how can folks get involved with it? Well, I like to call it the vaccine machine because that's what we're doing with it. Um, right. We got this camper through a, a grant with the community reinvestment program of the city. So we are able to bring this camper around to different locations in Columbus and go to those places where people may have an issue with transportation or not being able to get to the health department or somewhere where they can get some of these vaccines. So. Um, this week we are going to a lot of different locations, one every day, because it's National Influenza Vaccine Awareness Week. Okay. And there you have it. You're looking at a yes. list of all the locations right there. Monday, starting today, starting all the way through today. Friday. And Pam, mm -hmm. I see very specific locations, right. very specific times. So if you're near your TV right now, you'll want to take a quick photo of this. Uh, if not, we'll have all this information um, available for you on our website. That's WRBL.com. And Pam, when I look mm -hmm. at this list, that's obviously a lot of locations that folks can just show up to. Is there any sort of registration that's required for folks to either get the flu vaccine or COVID-19 vaccine, or is it as essentially you walk up to it and you can get whichever one you need. How does that process work? Well, basically you can just walk up. Okay. Um, we've gone to locations where we can have people walk up instead of drive up. Some people don't have a car uh, or can't get a ride to the health department. So you can just walk up. You don't need to register for flu shot. We'd like you to register for a COVID vaccine but you don't have to. Okay. So um, you can just walk up and get whichever one you need, or you can get both if you like. Okay, and so essentially there are gonna be some people who see the interview and they write down, you know, the day and the time that they want to go to it, but there are some people who could very well just literally see it roll into their neighborhood. And essentially what you're saying is those people uh, who didn't know they were coming today or whatever they show up can just walk up to the clinic uh, and, mm -hmm. and, and, get, and get the shot. Pam, I'd like for you to speak about the importance of both vaccines. Obviously we've been covering it for, for folks this morning, you know, COVID-19 very, very much still a thing, uh, right. but even with uh, the seasonal flu around this time of, of the year, it, it's, I would imagine it's probably just as important to get both. What would you say about that? Yes, and you can get both at the same time okay. if you'd like. Um, but the thing about the flu vaccine is it's been around for a long time, and so people are a little more trusting of that. And also, the younger children can get a flu vaccine. It's recommended that everyone from six months of age on up get a flu vaccine. So that's that section of the children that are not approved yet for a COVID vaccine. So, you know, parents, you may want to be able to get your child vaccinated for flu because that's something we may see a little more of this year. You know, we didn't last year. Um, hopefully we won't this year either, but um, you never know with flu. And, you know, it does go on for a long time. It lasts into March, sometimes longer than that. Absolutely. Well, Pam, we certainly thank you for being here with us this morning to kind of break this down as you guys kick off this week. I know it's going to be a very busy week for you and your yes. team starting today, obviously going all the way to Friday. So one more time before we wrap up, I'd love to show folks um, that uh, graphic one more time so they can get a quick picture of where the mobile uh, clinic will be going. It starts today, runs through Friday. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if we can throw that up on the screen. There it is right there. Yes. Uh, Monday today, Frank B. Chester Rec Center, all the way to the Piggly Wiggly on Friday. Obviously, you want to take That's a right. double Double look at that screen right there. There are different times for each day. Um, again, we will have all this information available for you on our website. Our thanks to you, Pam, for being here with us this morning. Uh, if you keep showing up with this much energy, I think we're just going to have to keep by inviting you back. You say okay. you say it's hard to, to be here in the morning, but it, it's not showing. I got showing. my coffee. You, I'm good. You got your coffee. I want my second cup as well this morning. So we're in this we're in this together, Pam. Seriously, thank you for for being here with us. And again, we'll have all these details for you on our website. Thanks for having me.
Absolutely, Pam. Thank you. And uh, now time to turn to meteorologist Nicole Phillips for a quick look at what you need to know as you head out the door this morning. Some uh, some dense fog out there this morning. Nicole. Yeah, we've got some dense fog. Here's a look out at Phoenix City Amphitheater. Notice our visibility or actually that's Tumor's Corner there. Visibility down to less than a mile. So we do have the dense fog advisory in effect until the mid morning. And here you go. That's what you're going to be facing as you do step out the door this morning. 61 degrees in America's 57 degrees and Butler looking at your day plan. So fog this morning, we'll get a little break, maybe some spotty showers right around midday, and then we'll have a cold front coming through, bringing us a chance for some showers and even a few rumbles of thunder. Temperatures still in the 70s today, but cooler on Tuesday. Your seven day forecast coming up after the top 10. All right, thank you, Nicole. Before you go, here are your top 10 stories this morning. Starting with number 10, our Holiday Heroes campaign continues this Wednesday, December 8th. Our News 3 team will be at the Rivertown Ford on Whittlesey Boulevard in Columbus, accepting donations of new or gently used blankets, winter coats, hats, gloves, and and shoes. We certainly hope to see you there. Number nine, International Women's Month is coming up in March, and News 3 wants to recognize all the remarkable women in our community. Nominees are being accepted now through December 31st to nominate a remarkable woman in your life. You can fill out the nomination form on our website, WRBL.com. Number eight, middle and high schoolers all across Georgia and Alabama raced battery powered cars on Saturday. This is pretty cool. The F24 Santa Sprints competition stretched along Front Ave and Bay Avenue downtown. The, the event was backed by Green Power Columbus and ran by the Sports Council. Number seven, former U.S. Senator David Perdue could announce his plans to run for Georgia governor as early as today. That's according to multiple reports from Politico. Other Republicans in the race include Governor Brian Kemp, former Democrat Vernon Jones, and GOP activist Candace Taylor. Democrat Stacey Abrams announced she's running last week. Of course, we'll continue to follow this for you all day today. Number six, winter is upon us, and so is cold and flu season. And this year, health leaders say getting your flu shot is essential to keeping you safe. Last year's COVID-19 precautions kept thousands of people out of the hospital. So now with precautions easing, many are worried that this could bring a spike in those flu cases. Number five, this week, the West Central Health District is making getting vaccinated a little bit easier for you. How you ask, they're coming to your neighborhood. Take a look at all the locations they'll be at this week, starting today all the way through Friday, different times, different locations. You'll want to take a quick snapshot of that so you know where to find them at this week. Number four, starting today, all international travelers coming to the U.S. must undergo a COVID-19 test within 24 hours of their departure. Previously, they had to be tested within three days of their flight, now just 24 hours before they take off. Meanwhile, a South African travel ban is still in place. Number three, the Omicron variant continues to spread nationwide. According to state health officials, a Georgian tested positive for the strain yesterday. That person had returned home from South Africa and stayed in Georgia for two days before heading to New Jersey, where they are now quarantining. At number two, Jefferson County authorities are searching for a man said to be armed and dangerous after a shooting at a church. This weekend, they confirm 18 year old Michael Fomper was shot inside the Church of Jesus Christ Latter Day Saints Friday night. The shooter fled the scene and was no, no and no one was injured. Of course, more details for you on our website. Number one, two people are recovering after a weekend shooting in Columbus. They are expected to be OK. Meteorologist Nicole Phillip joins us now with one last look at that forecast. Hey, Nicole. Hey, so some dense fog this morning. That's going to slow you down in the 70s this afternoon with a cold front coming through. Bring us a chance for showers. We're in the 50s on Tuesday. All righty. Thank you so much, Nicole. And we do have a winner for our coffee mug contest. You'll find that on our website. But we thank you for being here with us on News 3. We'll see you right back here tomorrow.